If you ever wanted to 3D scan something really large, this is the video for you, because today we're 3D scanning this house. So to achieve this outcome, getting a 3D representation of this building, we're using two cameras today. First one is a drone camera and the second one is a DSLR camera. You might ask the question now, do I need all of this equipment to do this? The answer is probably not. There's several other options how to do this. You could, for example, use your smartphone camera if you are doing this for a very small house that isn't too high. You could also use a tripod extension and a remote control to take pictures from a higher point of view. You can also use something like the Insta360 uh, 1x2 or a GoPro camera with a uh, selfie stick that's extendable to probably even longer. There's longer selfie sticks. So you can use this with a remote control to take pictures from higher point of view so you can get different angles with different cameras. But in general, you could say drone footage is probably the best for higher buildings, for taller buildings. And you can add additional pictures from other cameras on the ground level, specifically for points where it's really hard to go with the drone. So I'd say let's now launch the drone and take the first few hundred pictures. So I'm starting in one corner of the building, pointing the camera towards it, and then I'm moving the camera, so the drone, meter by meter, taking more and more pictures. However, to succeed in this process, there is a few things that you should keep in mind. So before you start flying a drone around a building like this, you want to check out the surroundings of the building. So where are the trees located? For example, these two trees here, are very close to the building and they don't look like they'd be close but if you're flying the drone you're mostly looking at your smartphone and at the controller and you're probably not realizing that you're going backwards with the drone to get a better point of view for the camera and then you're running backwards into the tree so that is why you probably want to have a second person watching you while you're flying the drone or you will be very careful and always watching where the drone is, then looking at where the camera is pointing and then taking a picture and then moving the drone slowly around the building. Some drone manufacturers like DJI, they have started to include sensors in their drones. For example, this DJI Mavic Air 2 has a front sensor and sensors on the bottom and on the backside. And these are going to help you not to crash into objects that are in the flight path. So in this direction, this is pretty safe. And also you cannot crash into something that's below the drone. But since we are doing photogrammetry and we're mostly circulating, we are si flying sideways. And so these sensors actually don't help us that much. Another factor to consider when doing photos for a photogrammetry process is the weather conditions. So ideally you will have an overcast sky situation like we have it now. And one of the worst situations is gonna be if it's partially cloudy and then the bright sunlight comes out and there's always this change of light. So that's what you don't want. If you cannot avoid it then even harsh sunlight is better than a always changing situation. So the ideal situation, of course, is overcast, pretty constant lighting. So we don't get these harsh shadows from the sunlight. So in the end, I wasn't that lucky. The clouds went away and the harsh sunlight came out. I took the pictures from a lower angle, then went up with the drone to a higher level, took more pictures and then went up even higher, taking pictures from a very high angle, also from the side of the building. And that was about 100 pictures in the garden side. So the garden side of the building was actually easy to do, but now we're coming to the front side and here we have multiple trees in front of the building that are obscuring the view for the camera and also make it very dangerous to fly the drone too close to the building. 
there's more trees over here which make it even harder to even go back with the camera with the drone and fly it here so we have to go much higher and then there's another tree here so the only solution to our getting like a good view of the lower parts of the building and especially the things that are in the shadow is taking more pictures with the camera just manually on the ground level So for the sake of detail, I've also repeated this process on the other side of the building. And now it's time to take all of the pictures from the drone and the cameras into the computer and do the photogrammetry process. So to convert the images that we have just taken outside using the different cameras, we have to use a photogrammetry software. And just a brief explainer what that is. The photogrammetry software will take all the images and then compile them into a 3D model, but is doing it in several stages. For demonstration purposes, I'm using Meshroom, which is running on my PC, but you could also use another photogrammetry software because the process itself is very similar in all of these programs. The usage, however, and the ease of use might be very different. So they might be targeted towards professional or educational users. Some of them cost money, some of them are free. Meshroom in this case is free, but I've also found a pretty decent list of best photogrammetry programs of 2022 on all3dp.com. It's a pretty extensive list, goes very much into detail about what operation system is the program running, what requirements does the software have, what's the target audience. So you might find something there for you that suits you better because when we're coming back to Meshroom, you have to know that this program, it's very good, it's very easy to use. However, it only runs on computers that have an NVIDIA graphic card. And if you're a Mac user and you still have an Intel computer with an NVIDIA card, you're lucky you can still use this. But if you already switch to the M1 architecture, this program doesn't work anymore because it doesn't obviously support NVIDIA graphic cards anymore. However, on the latest Mac operating system, there is an alternative solution available since a few months now. I will make a video specifically about that. Uh, so check out my channel to see that video popping up very soon. Don't forget to subscribe. And we're focusing on Meshroom in this tutorial because it's like from the process, as I said, is very similar in all of these programs. What is the first step? The first step is to import images into a new project. So usually if you open up this program, you start a new project. So in this folder, I have all of the drone images that I've taken. So these must be somewhat around 300 images and I'm opening them, importing them into Meshroom right now. And Meshroom is going to analyze all of the images and trying to figure out what camera has been used and um, if it finds a matching camera, it will use those properties. In my case, it didn't find the exact equivalent. So it was saying the focal length was estimated from metadata only because it doesn't know the DJI uh, Mavic Air 2 yet for whatever reason. It's not in the database yet, but your camera might be in a database. It doesn't really make such a huge difference. It might influence the quality of the result, but most of the time the, the software can guess the parameters from the metadata of the images. Now, usually in most programs, you have now one button that you can click to do the whole process completely automated, which is in this case, the start button. But I don't want you to hit the start button because that might waste a lot of your time. Instead, I would say let's go through the steps step by step because you will see you can save a lot of time if you're not letting this program run for hours and hours and hours to see that the result is not what you want. So the first step that we should do with the software is letting it analyze all of the images to figure out the camera positions and to see whether all the images are actually making it into the final calculation. Why is that? If the software doesn't match any of the images because there has been not enough overlap between those images and you might have made a um, huge step to the side and then the software loses track of the following images, a whole series of images might not make it into the final calculation. And that's why we should run the first step isolated to figure out if we have to retake some of the images, if we have to add in more images before we let the software run for hours and figure it out in the end after it's too late. So the first step that we're going to run is called structure from motion. 
and it's step number five in a series of steps in Meshroom. And if we right click this node, we can hit the compute button here and that starts the calculation. This is gonna take about an hour in my case and I've done this already. So we're jumping right into the result of this specific step. When the calculation for structure from motion is done, what you will get is two things. You will see on the left hand side, which camera positions actually made it into the final calculation. And you see in my case, all of these images are having a green camera icon. That means they made it into the calculation. You can also double check here on the left, lower left corner. There is 318 input images and 318 camera positions have been calculated. That's good. That means all of the images made it into this first step. What you will also get from the step is a so-called called point cloud and that point cloud shows you already a bit like how much quality are you going to expect from this calculation is there any huge holes in this thing is there very dense areas and are there areas where the point cloud is not very dense so not much detail to be expected and that might be the areas where you should take more pictures to get more detailed you can already guess from this step i could stop at this step already and analyze this and figure out where i need to take more images so the next step is called meshing and that meshing step is going to take much much longer than structure for motion just to give you an indication how long this is going to take if you do this for these 318 images so structure for motion took about one hour to do you can see this in the log file um, if you go to the first step and you look when this has been started in this case about nine o'clock in the evening structure for motion was finished about one hour later but if we look at when the meshing process has been done the next day at noon so that means it ran 15 hours just to do the meshing step. So the meshing step is going to give us a 3D model from those images already. It is not a textured colored version yet, but that might be perfectly fine if you only want to take the model. So the 3D reconstruction of this scan and put it into a slicer software and 3D print it. It's not that easy. However, you need to do some intermediate steps to clean the model and prepare it. But this could be everything that you need already. But if you also want a colored and textured version because you want to show this for example you want to put it on a website after here you know, i've post processed it and you want to make it available as a yeah, turnable model that people can look at uh, on the internet then you might also go for the final step but this step already allows you to uh, figure out the quality of the final result because that's not going to change in the textured version this is really already showing you are there any gaps and holes and we can see this is far from perfect yet because we have probably some issues with some of the camera positions if we turn this model further around you can see that on the back side of the building we have a few huge issues for example here on this side and we will see this in the colored version even better there was this huge tree in front of the building so there's a huge hole because we don't have images yet into this process which cover the gaps that the drone couldn't see and same problem here on this side is a little bit of a hole here in this building because probably I didn't have enough images that overlapped and there was probably also some reflections in those images that's another issue if you have the sun coming down harsh and if you have some shiny surfaces that reflect the light back it might be that the software doesn't figure it out yet and it thinks that there is actually a hole in the building and instead it was just a reflection so this can happen and it might be the case that you need to retake those images when it's cloudy or you need to edit those images so you reduce the amount of reflections a bit. This is all things that you will see in this kind of process already. And if we go to the final texturing step and look in the log file, we can see that this finished at about eight o'clock in the evening. So another six hours later after the uh, actual meshing. So if you really want this textured version, you really need to wait quite a bit longer. Now let's open the texturing result and you do this by double clicking the node. So I don't wanna see the meshing together with texturing and I'm just clicking on this eye and it's not showing the meshing anymore it's just showing the texturing and then we can zoom out a bit um, to see how this looks in the colored version which like at first sight this looks nice and you could probably use this to demo something or to put it on a website if you have a little bit more image specifically on this side but you can see also there is there's a huge amount of problems with this model still 
for example, the undersides of this roof here, um, they have no detail. So we probably have to take more images like from the ground, pointing the camera up here and, and showing more detail here so we can get a much better result. Still there, I mean, from a model perspective, as I told you, it didn't change. The text range step is just putting the colored textures over the 3D model. What I've done, as you seen previously in the video, I've taken more images on the ground level using another camera to fill in those gaps and to figure out if I can, for example, get rid of this problem here with the tree. Let's open up that version. So again, the first thing that I wanna check is the structure from motion result. That's gonna show me which kind of images, which of the images that I've additionally taken have made it into the final calculation. And you can see specifically on this side, there's now much more cameras visible. However, if I'm looking in this list here on the left-hand side, I can see now I have 357 instead of 318 images, uh, input images, but only 335 images made it into the calculation. So some of the images didn't go into the calculation and that's not good because that means I have to go back again and retake those images. So if we try to figure out why this happened, so at some point the software probably lost track where I was with the camera. And this is a huge step. So if this is, these are the previous images, I moved the camera just slightly and then, then obviously I made the mistake to move the camera too much and it lost track and the problem is that it's not only affecting one image but it's affecting the whole series of image because it's completely lost track of all of the following images so the takeaway is every image needs to overlap with the next image and if there's one image that doesn't fit anymore the whole series of images that came afterwards are probably left out of the calculation and that's something that you have to fix now one question that came up pretty often in my previous photogrammetry video that's also covered meshroom is how do i get results out of this software into another software and there there's different stages where you can do this. You can already stop at the structure from motion step and take the point cloud and import it, for example, into a program like MeshLab. But let's say you want to take the result from the meshing step and take that into Fusion 360 or any CAD program. You could do this simply by uh, looking in the log file and then look at the save mesh to object step, which is the last thing to happen. It saves this result into a file and you can find the file here. In this case, I can just copy copy this path and then open it up in my explorer and that will open, in my case, it's going to open up 3D Viewer. And that's a program where you can just look at the result, but could also use this file and open it up in any other program. So here we go. This is the object file opened in the 3D Viewer. This is a pretty huge model. However, you probably have to post-process it and reduce the number of vertices. For example, if you want to 3D print this, we want to probably get rid of all of the things that we don't want here. And then we need to reduce the number of vertices, clean it, probably make it smooth you would also probably want to reverse engineer that. That is a completely different process. This is way too much information for one video. So I'm linking information in other videos that cover these kind of topics down in the description. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I see you in the next one covering more of the post-processing work to be done if you want to 3D print something like this house or any other 3D scan and also how you would do some kind of reverse engineering. I would like to know what are the programs that you are using for photogrammetry and what are the questions that you still have please let me know down in the comments of this video and also consider watching one of my other videos from this playlist